It's the Rink Live podcast for another week. It is Robertson Cup week and uh, exciting time in the state of hockey. Who, you know, there's no off season here. I keep saying that to everyone. The outdoor rinks have all melted. You know, the pond hockey's gone, but hockey continues even though it's sunshine out. Uh, Robertson Cup, for folks who don't know, is the final four of the North American Hockey League. It's hosted at Fogarty Arena, the Ice House up in Blaine, and an interesting field this year with four kind of non-traditional teams in it. Uh, one team didn't exist last year. We're happy to be joined by uh, the coach of the Anchorage Wolverines, Mike Akins. Now, I'm a little outnumbered here. Kirsten Krull is joining us this week. I am the only person on this podcast who is not a rocket from Rochester, John Marshall. So I'm feeling a little intimidated, but Kirsten, welcome to the show. And, uh, and uh, you know, you having fun with Robertson Cup Week? Yeah, it's been great. So it's interesting you bring up the Rockets because Keith Morris, our director of hockey ops, jokes all the time that so we, we have a we have a player hanging head in from Halleck, Minnesota, and he calls his team the Kitson Rockets. Uh, <laughs> Keith does, and he calls Albert Lee Tigers, where Campbell Psychos is from, the Albert Lee Rockets, and it's the Fairbolt Rockets for he. Keith Morris thinks every team in Minnesota is the Rockets. So. I like it. I like it. <laughs> John Marshall represent though. Rochester, Minnesota represent. I love it. I love John it. Anytime I meet somebody from Rochester, it is always super exciting. Well, yeah, it's Sh- awesome. Sean Podine's not here, so I can't claim my all-time favorite Rocket is on the podcast, but uh, the, the two of you will have to fill in. There's been some so pretty good your second players. choices, basically. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Go ahead, Mike. Pretty, pretty darn good players that have come through uh, John Marshall back in the day. They, you know, they won the state championship back in '77, and you yep. know the names on, on that team are just phenomenal. And it's it's interesting because my brother was on that team, and those guys still get together. They actually flew in this week. My brother did, and they went up north for a, a golf trip. So uh, that group is together, and, and then you have after that you have the Podines and the and uh, 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 the Mike Curry and Pat Firstweiler and, and, and our whole group that came through. Um, you know, we had a pretty good group when I came through in the late 80s. And, and uh, there's been a lot of good players there. I, I, will you know, say- I never played for the John Marshall hockey team. I don't have any family members who played for the John Marshall hockey team. But I do have a handful of friends who did. And- just a lot of fun, a lot of great players that, I, like you're, you mentioned, have come through there. Well, right. I will say, too, I'm, I'm a little bit younger. Remember 77, you know, that's the legendary team that beat Edina in the championship game. But I will say one of the great state championship games I ever saw was 1989. Uh, John Marshall and Jefferson wound up going to overtime, and Jefferson wound up winning it. But just a fantastic back-and-forth game with two real heavyweight teams and, and just, just some really great hockey at the old Civic Center. Yeah, that was uh, get them back actually, there now. Get them <laughs> back in the state tournament. That that uh, that team you're talking about uh, was my senior year in '89 from John Marshall, and uh, so that's the Molik and and Eric Beans. Okay. Uh, you know, and then a lot of just hardworking, you know, really just 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 meat potatoes type guys. It's amazing what they did. I I played in the USHL that year and chose uh, you know to go that route. Um, which was an amazing experience for me. I got to live at home. Uh, the Rochester Mustangs were kind of the place to play at that time. We, we won nationals three out of four years. We won one my second year. But, uh, you know, that, that was a tough night for me when they were, <laughs> they were playing uh, that championship game. We were playing at home in Rochester when I was with the Mustangs. And I would skate by the penalty box and ask what the score was and how the boys were doing. And, I felt like I played a lot of pretty good games in juniors, and that was not one of my better games that night. I wasn't too focused on our game. I was really, really, you know, wanting to watch that game and and know how my buddies were doing. Well, let's uh, let's talk about the Anchorage Wolverines. A year ago, uh, this team didn't exist. Uh, you know, quite an opportunity for you. I know you had been coaching here in Minnesota for a while and, and an opportunity to, to kind of start from scratch. Tell me about, you know, how the process started. Where, where did you get the bug in your, uh, at your ear to, hey, maybe I'll move up to Alaska and, and uh, start from scratch with a hockey team? Sure. That, uh, you know, I, when I left Omaha, it's about 10 years ago now. I was uh, the head coach in, in, with the Lancers for a couple of years and, you know, great organization. It was a lot of fun. And it really got to the point where I had two daughters that were at the age where I didn't, we didn't feel like it was fair 
to keep, you know, the hiring and firing process of coaching and moving around the country. So we went back to Rochester. I took a job at a, at a training center that uh, Olmstead Medical Center had built. It was a brand new facility and I was there for eight years and it, it was really a, just a great experience. And, and um, you know, I, I finished my college degree while I was back home and and, um, you know, then I get, the Grizzlies came into town and helped them the last three years. And that was a lot of fun. And to be part of the Austin Bruins organization, and uh, they, they do a lot of good things over there and, and uh, really good people. So really what happened as far as Anchorage, um, Keith Morris, the director of hockey ops, had called me last winter, just kind of uh, asking about our players. So I knew there was a franchise coming, but at that point, we didn't talk about the coaching situation at all. So uh, really where that started was um, Dallas Ferguson is an assistant coach at the University of Denver and uh, uh, my alma mater and called me and said, hey, there's this, this team being put together in Anchorage and the ownership group is really good. I, you know, they're looking for a coach and I thought of you, you know, could I pass your name on to him? I said, yeah, but, you know, go ahead. I, I don't know how interested I am, but I'll, you know, I'll talk to them. And then I started to do some research and uh, on the owners and, and the people and, and that were involved and everything about it, I was just blown away. So when I finally did meet with them and, and interviewed, um, it went smoothly. And, you know, I've known Keith Morris for 30 years. Um, he, he used to help. Uh, he was a scout with Omaha back uh, when I left the University of Denver in 95, my first coaching job was an assistant in Omaha. So I was there two different times, but Keith was a scout back then and it just felt right. And my family was on board with it. I now have uh, uh, my daughter's a freshman golfer at Augsburg and the other daughter is a junior at Rochester John Marshall plays um, soccer and basketball. So, you know, that's the only tough part of this is that we didn't move the family we just didn't feel like it was the right thing to to make Brianna leave her high school friends we wanted her to experience that so I went by myself and part of my deal was a place to stay and I live in a in a mother-in-law suite attached to a really nice big house it's basically a two-bedroom condo and I have a vehicle pro for provided so I didn't have to you know truck something up there or whatever and it's just been it's been great right from day one. I think our ownership group is phenomenal. Uh, everybody involved with the organization has just been great. And um, I think it's, it shows on the ice. I think from top to bottom, people are, are, are good people in the organization. And I think a lot of people are having fun. And to expand on that a little bit more, just talk about how your most recent stop with the Rochester Grizzlies helped you get to this role now that you have with Anchorage. Yeah, you know, we got my foot back in the door and, and we were having fun in Rochester. We really felt like, you know, our, our first year there, we were pretty good. And the second year, we felt like we had a chance to win a championship there. And um, uh, we had COVID issues. And so we didn't get to do that. And then the third year, we made it to the championship game. And it was a great experience. We, we were a billet family. We actually had four players at our house at, at one point. So uh, we kind of had the whole spectrum of it being involved coaching and, and having what, you know, four boys that basically were sons that were playing on the team. And uh, it was one big, happy family at the Aikens house. then. so I got the opportunity to, to coach with Casey Mignon the first year. Uh, Casey was a young guy coming in from Division Three hockey where he's an assistant out east. And uh, he did a great job of kind of laying the framework and the groundwork for us to get going in Rochester. And, and then uh, he moved on to the NA and now he's the head coach in Chippewa and he's doing great there. So um, really, really, you know, good relationship Casey and I have. He still comes down to my house for Thanksgiving and that kind of stuff when he can. So then I was lucky enough where Chris Ratzloff took, took the job and, um, uh, you know, I, I just wasn't interested at that point of leaving my full-time job and becoming the head coach, but I was really happy to stick around and help those guys. And, uh, you know, Chris Ratzloff and I have played together since uh, Squirts. We were actually D partners in Pee Wees and, and uh, spent a lot of time together. He was my ride to and from school. I was always kind of the young guy that 
played on those teams and and um, he's a year older than me and so he was my ride before I had a license and that kind of stuff so I've known the Ratzlaff family for a long time they're unbelievable people uh, I think there were definitely some things that helped me from the way he does things and, and the relationships that he has with his players and that kind of stuff that I think has helped our team here in Anchorage. It's the Rink Live Podcast. I'm Jess Myers along with Christian Crow. We're talking to Mike Akins, the head coach of the Anchorage Wolverines. They are going to make their Robertson Cup debut Friday uh, early afternoon or late afternoon, I guess, versus the St. Cloud Norseman. Now, uh, Mike, tell us about building a team. I mean, did you come with a roster complete or did you have to go out and find, uh, you know, 20 some guys who hopefully could skate forwards and backwards? When I, when I got hired, there were, uh, there were some tender players already. And, and it's interesting because a lot of my friends that were in the game were calling me and saying, Hey, Aches, heads up. There's like, there's guys that have been tendered on your team that can't play. They're not very good players. Your roster is very good. They, they were painting a pretty bleak picture for me. And, um, you know, not all those guys did make our team when it was all said and done. Uh, but there are a lot of them that did that are still here and have been key players for us. So it, some of that was, uh, was in place. And then we went out, we had tryout camp and, and uh, uh, that was in um, July in North Dakota at, at the Ralph. And we got a few players out of there. And then we did not do a main camp. So it was a little bit of a different process that we, we chose. And we just, we invited 42 players in to start training camp with us in Anchorage. And that was quite a, quite a feat to house them all. And, you know, we, we got it all done and, and uh, we just whittled our team down from there. And once we whittled it down, we only made one trade during the season at the deadline. Um, so we really kind of just stuck with our guys we believed in our guys. Um, you know, our team is full of, it was really built with character. Um, it, we laugh because Keith Morris and I are over 50 now and, and we're, we're like, we're, we're just too old to deal with a bunch of bad character players. <laughs> you know, so we, we really wanted high character guys. And it, it, that's really the foundation of our team. It's just a bunch of really good kids and they really care about each other. They have fun coming to the rink. And I think we've come a long way from, from where we were at the showcase at the beginning of the year. You know, I looked at it and I was like, man, our, our defense are just terrible. They're not good enough to play at this level. Uh, you know, there was some panic maybe going to be ready to set in. And I, I was sure when I took the job that, you know, the expectations and what they were looking for from the ownership group uh, was basically for us to be competitive and, and I was okay with that. And we've certainly exceeded those expectations. So it's been fun. Well, when you look back at it now, does it kind of seem like a whirlwind year and experience from where you began? And now first year as an organization, you not only were awarded organization of the year, but you're here in the Robertson Cup tournament. Yeah. And, you know, and we have players from, you know, that were, some of them were leftover. Some of them were guys that, that, if we want to give them an opportunity, they wouldn't be in the, in the NHL and, and they've turned out to be good players. I really believe that, that you can get guys, you know, we cut a ton of players every year that could be really good if we worked with them and, and kept them in our team. So, you know, you look at the way our roster um, was built, we have a bunch of NA three players and, and, you know, that's unusual for this league. There's one or two, maybe you hope to get on your team and, you know, for us, we, we've got several, and there's some great stories in there. Uh, you know, Campbell Psychos is our captain. Uh, he played in North Iowa for the uh, the Bulls in the NA3, which which beat our Grizzlies team last year. Uh, I, I knew I was getting the job at that point, and I watched Campbell very closely. I have known him for several years. So I watched him close at the national tournament, and I still wasn't, you know, sold if, if he could play in this league or not. And um, he came to our camp in, in Grand Forks, was okay. I, I invited him to, to our training camp. And at that point, it got to where we were like, man, our deer, we're really getting filled up on the D spots. And it's like, should I call Campbell and tell him not to waste his time and don't bother coming to training camp? And, and he called me and said, oh, I, I have my plane ticket. I'm all set to come. And well, Campbell's coming. And now he has a scholarship to Mankato. 
Uh, he's our captain. It, it's just an incredible story. But, I, you know, the ladder development has been huge for us to get players from from out of uh, the midget teams and, and uh, the, the tier three guys that have worked out for us. It's just been awesome. Uh, Mike, I was going to ask, at one point uh, in, in college hockey history, you couldn't get a ticket at Sullivan Arena to see Alaska Anchorage. It was the hottest show in, in Alaska. You know, the attendance fell off. They, they are taking a pause with their program. They're kind of rebuilding right now. Was this a good time for the Wolverines to come along? Was there kind of a hunger among the, the fan base in Anchorage to, to see some higher end hockey? A huge hunger. There is. I, people are hockey crazy up in Alaska. Uh, Anchorage is a big city. And, um, you know, I, I think there are a ton of players that are being produced there and they have to leave um, to go play juniors in other places. And, and it's been a definite void, um, a team that um, has been needed at that level for a long time. And so, you know, that was the idea was to really have these homegrown kids, give them an opportunity to stay home, give them a place to play. Uh, you know, everything has been great other than Sullivan Arena right now is still a homeless shelter. So wow. during the winter, it was about 400 or a little more 400 homeless people that were being housed there. And, um, you know, so we haven't played at Sullivan Arena yet. It sounds like there's now finally a plan in place with the assembly of uh, Anchorage has voted a plan. And uh, it sounds like June 28th that, uh, uh, Sullivan Arena is going to be open to us and we're really looking forward to it. We, we've, we've had a great, you know, temporary home at Ben Bokey Arena, which only seats about a thousand people. And, and there's been nights we've had a, a lot more than that in that building. <laughs> and so we're really hopeful when we get into Sullivan Arena that all this momentum that we've created is going to continue. And, you know, UAA is, is, coming back this winter as well so yep. we don't feel like we're competing with UAA we're happy to see them come back it's going to be more opportunity for our guys to move on and, and our relationship with that coaching staff is good and you know we're, we're we have a great relationship with with Fairbanks as well uh University of Alaska Fairbanks is right sure. up the road both those coaches uh, uh UAA and UAF their head coaches were at our banquet which we had about a month ago and so it, it's really a lot of cool stuff going on in Anchorage. And coach, another thing I wanted to ask you to uh, and expand on it a little bit, Anchorage named organization of the year in the North American Hockey League, just especially first season in the NAHL being awarded this. What does that mean? Well, I think it's really cool. And it, it, it's really been, you know, from top to bottom, like the ownership, the marketing people, um, you know, they're, I know when our marketing people meet with other staffs and that around the league, we, we have some deals that are nobody else can imagine as far as sponsorship. And, you know, we have, we have several sponsors that are over a hundred thousand dollars a year, um, you know, numerous over 50. And, you know, for example, during the playoffs, the phone rang and, and somebody said, Hey, we, we want a sponsor for next year. Here's our 25,000 right now. Uh, you know, in this league, a $10,000 ice logo is, is probably a big time deal. And you're really happy to get that. So we, we, we're on just a whole nother level when it comes to, to um, what our staff and Spain will accomplish um, is off the ice. And then when you throw the on ice product in, and we really feel like, you know, the Alaska teams, just so everybody knows, like we're responsible for all the expenses to fly people up to all our games, the airfare, the hotel, the meals, the transportation, it, it's a big expenditure. You're probably a half million dollars on, on our travel budget. So, um, you know, the people have a huge, um, a huge chunk to knock off there when it comes to sponsorship and ticket sales. And there's a lot involved. And it's really been just amazing to see what has happened in this first year. Interesting matchup against St. Cloud. Uh, you know, I just think from a geographical standpoint, Corey Millen, the coach of the Norseman, has spent plenty of time in Alaska in his uh, in his career. In fact, he's still got a nine oh seven cell phone number, which I which I find entertaining. Uh, sure. And then your top top scorer is a St. Cloud area kid. And now I don't care whether he can play or not. I don't care the average is a point a game. Talon Sigurdsson has got to be one of the great names in all of the North American Hockey League. I tell you what, what, what an unbelievable kid. I mean, when you meet him, he is, 
he is religious. He went to the North Star Academy. They, they're very religious, you know, just uh, really big into their faith and good people. And, you know, talent was passed over by everybody. He was cut several teams and, you know, I, the phone rang and some people said, hey, this kid's pretty good. You need to take a look at him. He's just been awesome for us. And, and he's one of our captains as well. So to, to talk about Corey, uh, obviously St. St. Cloud, the Norsemen are good. Uh, yeah. We know it. We, we know we're kind of up against it, going against them. They're the number one seed. We're the number four seed. But you know what? I, I honestly felt kind of that same way going up against the Wilderness. I think the Wilderness are darn good. I think they play hard. They're, they're coached well. When Scott Pionk went in there and joined their staff, now all of a sudden you had a really good staff. Uh, um, I, you know, Corey Millen's won a championship at this level. So, you know, we're in our first year. We're happy to be here. There's no doubt about it. Oh, I will say this. We, our guys won't quit and, and they don't know that they should win these games and they found ways to win other games. So who knows, maybe we can, we can find some magic here and, and it continues. And the guys on your team, too, even after talking to a couple of them this morning, they seem like they're a group of guys who just want to play hard for each other and really take the team aspect of it. And, you know, the individual accolades are great, but they wouldn't get that without the team. So uh, before they take the ice this weekend, what kind of is the message to them and what do you expect them to bring with the team aspect in hand? Well, I think we're just going to continue, you know, with our routine. You know, we, we, we're not going to change anything the way we do it. Uh, we'll tweak some things and be prepared for St. Cloud. But I'm more concerned with the way we are conducting ourselves and, and we're doing the right things to get ourselves mentally ready to, to battle for 60 minutes when that puck drops. And, you know, it's gotten to the point of the year, Kristen, where I, I'm there, but it's their team. They, they, they take it over. We're, we're just kind of there to steer them in the right direction. And, and it's been a really cool process to watch this evolve and watch our players, you know, take the team over and um, how much they care about each other. And, and, you know, the individual things, what you saw this morning, that, that is no, like, that's not a show. That's not talking to, to, you know, Hey, we're supposed to say this, that that's our, our guys. They, they would rather have somebody else have the success on our team than themselves. And they, they know, and we've talked about it since day one, that the, the better our team does, um, the more individual recognition they're going to get as far as scholarships and guys have an opportunity to move on. And, and we're seeing that. So it's been really cool. Talking with Mike Akins, the head coach of the Anchorage Wolverines, as they prepare for the Robertson Cup at the Ice House uh, up in Blaine. It starts on Friday, 4.30 p.m. They take on the St. Cloud Norseman. Mike, I've watched you play for a long time. I remember you playing for the Mustangs. I remember your, your abbreviated freshman year of college. I've got to ask you, you know, your career ended on one of the uh, you know, I'll just say it. I thought it was a dirty hit by a, by a player from Wisconsin. It was, it was the original viral video before the internet even existed. You know, the, 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 the hit that was delivered, uh, you know, with your back turned and that ended your career. How are you doing uh, health wise? You know, I, I, I know you couldn't play college after that again, but do you have any kind of residual effects from that? And just tell us about that point in your life. Well, I, I the surgery I had was uh, C1 and C2, your top vertebrae. Yeah. Um, I had fused together. So I lost a lot of mobility in my neck and, um, you know, I really had the surgery and stuff because I, I, I thought I was going to redshirt my sophomore year and come back and play again. Sure. And really the Mayo Clinic had, had cleared me for that. But some of the verbiage in the letter was, you know, kind of devastating type of, you know, if something doesn't, does happen and blah, blah, blah. So the university just didn't allow it to happen. So yeah. I, I, you know, I knew I was always going to get into coaching at some point. And for me, it just happened a little bit sooner because I became a student assistant at Denver with Frank Saratori, uh, who I, I've known since I was, uh, you know, a, a young kid. He was a head coach in Rochester with the Mustangs at one point as well. Um, so, you know, that that night uh, was uh, mid-January. I had just kind of gotten my my feet under myself in college hockey. I, I was a defenseman, a fairly skilled defenseman, but I felt like I was kind of responsible defensively and competed hard. But I had five goals in the last seven games I played and was just kind of getting used to the speed and, and all that. 
And unfortunately, uh, my, my hockey career ended in a game at home against Denver. My parents were watching the game on the, the old big satellite dish in the backyard that we used to have back in the days so they could watch games. And you know, my brother was at the game. My brother was a, was a good player at Colorado College back in the day. He, he happened to be there that night. So he rode with me uh, in the ambulance. And, you know, it just, it's funny because you, I, we've had injuries. I'm an athlete. I played all sports growing up. There are a lot of times I've been in the emergency room and, and things turn out to, to be okay. That this one was a little different. You know, they start cutting your Jersey off you when you're strapped down to the backboard. And this was Friday night. I was like, Whoa, Whoa, Whoa. Like we play tomorrow, like stop cutting my Jersey off, you know? Uh, and, and, and within minutes after having, you know, some tests done and stuff, they're, they're basically like, Hey, your, your hockey career's done. And wow. You know, it, it was a little bit crazy. So uh, went, flew home to the Mayo Clinic. Um, Dr. Mike Stewart uh, is a family friend of ours and, and has been uh, at the clinic forever. Uh, huge hockey family. He's got, you know, three boys that played in the NHL and yep. college hockey. And Kristen played out at BC. Um, Mike's been the Olympic team doctor. So uh, he set us up and, and we had the surgery and, and moved on. And it's interesting because Campbell Psychos, has a hand injury right now in our team. And we went through Doc Stewart, helped us out again in the hockey world uh, at the Mayo Clinic. So, uh, you know, just interesting story there. But, you know, yeah, so for me, it ended real quickly. I got into coaching and here we are. Okay, um, you, men you mentioned Rochester. Uh, and Kirsten knows my answer to this, but I've got to ask you, you're back home, you're hungry. Is it Newt's? Is it John Hardy's? Where, where are you going? Well, Jess, you, you took the of... words out of my mouth because that's exactly what I was going to ask. We know <laughs> Jess's go-to is John I'm, Hardy's. I'm the John Hardy's but, guy. No question. Like, even taking look, his options out of consideration, where is the go-to in Rochester? Well, you, you see me, I, I'm the guy. If you look at my body, I've been to all those places. So, you know, John Hardy's is definitely one for me. Uh, Mr. Pizza is always, you know, and even like my brothers fly home and one of the first places my brother Bruce wants to go is Mr. Pizza. So, you know, that's a staple of, of the Aikens household. Uh, we're a huge Hunan Garden fan. Okay. So we, we'll, we'll pick that up and bring it over to my parents or whatever. Um, our team, when we came down after the showcase, we based ourselves out of Rochester. We stayed at the Ramada Inn right over by the fairgrounds. We, we uh, had a locker room over at Grand Marina. We were able to walk back and forth. We saved the bus cost of, you know, it's twelve thirteen hundred dollars $1,300 a day just to have your bus, you know, sit there and take you to three different meals or whatever you do. So we kind of eliminated that. And then you look at what was available to us on that side of town. Some of those were just happened to be Coach Aiken's restaurants that we frequented. So, you know, then you throw in like, uh, the, the Outback is there. We did a nice team meal there. Uh, Buffalo Wild Wings, Panera. So we based ourselves out of Rochester, went and played, go back to Rochester. We did that in September and then we did it again at Christmas time. So when we beat um, the Wilderness um, here in the playoffs, it was kind of my, I was like, you know, this is maybe not a bad place for us just to hang out and croquet and right away the guys were like we we got to go to Roch Vegas they call it <laughs> so our players you know they're comfortable at the Ramada the only time thing we did a little bit different this time is we we uh skated up at the rec center so we used the Grizzlies locker room and they were great to us and so we want to give a huge shout out to the Bruins organization and and uh, uh the Rochester Grizzlies for letting us use their facility the rec center was great to us and, um, you know, it worked out good. So, and then we made our way up here on Wednesday. Uh, people th probably think we're a little bit crazy, but we stopped in Faribault on the way up here and we did a school visit. So one of our players' moms is, uh, works at an elementary school in Faribault. And so we stopped and, and hung out with some kindergarten kids yesterday. Our guys had fun. And then we made our way up to Blaine. So not a bad trip. And you brought up Mr. Pizza, that garlic, Cheese bread is my absolute favorite. So now I know where I need to go once Robertson Cup is done. Um, but Mike, another thing that I wanted to ask you too, while we've got you, Southern Minnesota, Southeast Minnesota, especially, at least in my eyes, a huge 
a huge hockey fan base there, but often heavily overlooked as far as the state of hockey goes. What do you think that area has to offer? Well, you know, there were used to be a lot of players that came out of Southern Minnesota, Rochester in particular. I know that 77 team, I think there were 11 guys off that team that played division one. Uh, my group, uh, we made it to the state tournament in 88. And I think there were five division one players off that team, numerous other division three. Um, and, and since that time, it's been kind of spotty. It's, it's hit or miss. Uh, you have a fourth high school there. So some of the talent gets kind of dispersed over four teams. So the teams have struggled a little bit and haven't been quite as good other than the years that you know, a group will decide to go to Lourdes and Lourdes has had some success uh, over, uh, you know, with, with having some good teams. But, you know, after that, you know, you've had some division one players, but it just doesn't seem like it's quite the same as what it used to be. And I don't have an answer of, you know, I, I think they do a lot of good things there. And I, I'm not a, a guy who bashes you know, that I, that I have a better way of doing things or whatever. I don't know the answer why we're not producing more, but I know other areas, their, their levels have picked up and I'm not sure how much Rochester is really kind of growing um, their program. So, you know, Southeastern Minnesota has a lot of good players. We have Colin Pedersen from Owatonna, uh, Jackson Reinecke from Faribault, uh, Campbell Psychos is from Albert Lee, um, you know, Shane Soderwall was on our team with the Grizzlies, the Chicago player, but so we, we, we took Shane out of the NA3 from the Grizzlies. Um, I think that's what we have some from Southeastern Minnesota. I hope I'm not missing anybody, but you know, th there is some players there. And I think in the future, you know, we, we've tried to develop some relationships when we've been in town, we've had some of the Southeastern Minnesota kids come and skate with us. And, you know, there's going to be some guys coming out of there in the future. We could uh, certainly talk hockey all night. I uh, have no question with uh, with Kirsten Crow and I once we once we start talking junior hockey. But Mike Akins, head coach of the uh, Anchorage Wolverines, you've got a line chart to make out. So uh, we, we better let you go. Thank you for joining us and best of luck in the Robertson Cup. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's fun. Uh, you know, we go do these shows and it's great to talk about your team and and all the fun that we're having in Anchorage. And, and uh, you know, I hope we're building something big for the future. So thank you guys. Appreciate it. All goes well. And you get to take a nice trophy back, uh, back up North with you too. That would be nice. I, I'm actually in my hotel room right now. I have a jacuzzi tub over here to my right. And I, I jokingly said, I hope I'm smoking a cigar right here in this jacuzzi cup tub come Tuesday night. It would be kind of fun. That's that tough. would be incredible. Coach, <laughs> thank you so much. And like Jess said, best of luck this weekend. All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. That's the Rink Live podcast for another week. That's Kirsten Crawl. I'm Jess Myers. Thank you for joining us. All of our content is on the rinklive.com, and we will see you at the rink.